What's happening, everybody? I'm Steve, and welcome back to Junk Drummer TV, where I give my initial reactions, my hot takes, and my analysis on the drummers of today and yesterday, and maybe tomorrow if I stick around that long. I am a professional drum teacher and gigging musician, and I have been for the last 20 years. Before we get into today's video, I would like to remind everyone that the whole month of December 2019, I will be donating 100% of the donations made to my PayPal account, link in the description, to the Save the Music Foundation. If if you don't know what the Save the Music Foundation is, long story short, they're a charity that gives musical instruments and musical education materials to school systems that couldn't otherwise afford it. I grew up in a low income school system, so my high school and junior high could have definitely benefited from the Save the Music Foundation grants that they give out. So it's a charity that really hits close to home to me. So if you can, please help them out. Phil Collins is responsible for my whole life, and that is a ridiculous sentence. But it's true. When I was nine years old, my mom was playing a record that the cover of it had some dude's face on it, and there was this song called In the Air Tonight, and at nine years old, when I heard that drum solo, it was like a thunderbolt to the cranium. I knew at nine years old from that moment when I heard that solo that I was going to be a drummer. So, thanks Phil Collins for a lifetime of being functionally poor, losing most of my girlfriends because I have to be a part-time boyfriend because I'm always gone at gigs, having to drive a subpar car, but I've also got to record 15 records. I've also got to play a thousand gigs. I even got to appear on NPR twice. And most importantly, I have found so many interesting, wonderful people through playing music that are my lifelong friends. So, Phil Collins, thank you very much. Now, before we get into it, I'd like to give a shout out to one of my very first subscribers. His name is Deep Menon, but he has been with me almost from day one. And Deep Menon has asked for Phil Collins about 25 times in the comments section, and I promised him I would get to it before the end of the year. So this one goes out to you, sir. Uh, please give me a like, comment, and share. Give me a double tap on the subscription and the notification bell. And please remember that PayPal donation to save the music. So this is Phil Collins when he was with Genesis in 1980 and he's also playing with Chester Thompson in this video I've also done a Chester Thompson uh, uh, episode it's him playing with Frank Zappa please go check that out let's watch Phil Collins with Chester Thompson play a drum duet that uh, goes into Los Endos left-handed drummers just always look wrong to me You know, Chester Thompson has a lot of experience playing drum duet like this. He did it with Frank when he first came in the band. It was him and Ralph Humphreys. Okay, so right off the bat, this solo right here. In my career, I've only really got to play on stage with another drummer like a handful of times. And a couple times has been really awesome. And a couple other times has just been like uh, the other drummer trying to whip it out and just see who could cut each other's heads off on stage they're not doing that here they're playing a drum set solo together and playing off of each other this is the best way if you ever get a chance to be on stage with another drum set player and that's so rare man play with that drummer not against that drummer Yeah, man, you know, Phil Collins has that sound and he even had it back then too. You know, he usually played concert tom, so he didn't have the bottom head and you just... Yeah, sweet. That sound, man, those, the, I always think of his toms, they kind of bark, they bark at you. And that's that sound that I heard when I was nine when he played that solo in In The Air tonight. So yeah, this is, I don't know that much about Genesis, uh, like non-pop Genesis. Like this is 1980s, so I think Peter Gabriel's gone by now. Uh, but I don't really know anything about this era of Genesis. You know, what I know about Genesis is there's stuff in the late 80s and 90s, and of course, all of Phil Collins' pop music, which I love. So 
John Pill was wrong. There are some ladies in the crowd here for this prog band. You know, Genesis is a seminal uh, British prog band. You think of like, yes. Uh, Brand X, who also Phil played with, which as I guess was more fusion-y. Uh, K- uh, King Crimson, they were right in the middle of all of that. Oh, man, he's on point right here, man. When he was, I guess, still just a drummer. I guess he started singing not long after this, around this time. Again, I don't know that much about the history of Genesis. I know I love Peter Gabriel. You know, that whole first part there, you you know, that was that real... And he, he's got it going on there again. That 70s frenetic on top of the beat, very like excitable sounding drums. Rupert was different. Rupert had a more cool laid back style when he played fusion as yes. Not fusion frog. They're related. Fusion and frog are related for sure. Right here he's it's not a jazz feel. That old part right there was where the, the emphasis really, like the beat, was on the ride cymbal. He wasn't nailing out, you know, uh, any big snare drum hits. That's, you know, <coughs> excuse me, uh, kind of a, a fusion-y feel to that groove that he's playing right there. You know, this is a lot of Phil Collins playing that, you know, he didn't play like once he became, you know, pop star of the 80s and 90s. That's cool. One of the drummers was playing just a 30 second note run, you know, feel on the snare drum, and then the other drummer was hitting all those hits. <laughs> Nothing says like just prog than a double neck guitar that is a bass and a guitar. see a lot of those chops like that <laughs> this is some overblown 70s prog music this was the music that made punk happen lots of self-indulgence I hear you. Go ahead. Phil Collins with some chops, baby. There's that barky concert snare sound. Concert tom sound. Things are very theatrical right now. It's good to see the crowd was using stimulants to enjoy this psychedelic stage show back in the, well, this is 1980. So, you know, kind of went through the halftime, but almost like a, almost like a straight up slow down. Yeah, man, he, his around the drum set drum fills are still some of my favorite. A lot of it has to do with that sound as well. And no one ever really tried to get the Phil Collins drum sound. It's kind of his. Like, when you hear that... Yeah. Those kind of... The way that he, he phrases rhythms around this tom, man. So great. But yeah, nobody ever really tried to get his sound. band would be like a late night jam band festival band now. And everyone's stuff is hitting them just right. This is the band you put on stage and just blow up a bunch of hippies heads. So 
again, yeah. And, you know, Phil completely uh, learned on his own. You know, he couldn't read music. Actually, I think tried to learn music later on when he was doing stuff with, like, the Buddy Rich Big Band. He is completely self-taught. You don't have to go to Berkeley or have a, you know, a drum teacher to get the greatness. Now, Phil Collins also is one of the greatest you know, musicians of all time, one of the biggest selling. Because he had this whole career as a drummer. What the hell is going on? Genesis. I prefer your pop songs. Let me uh, finish that last thought. You know, uh, you know, Phil Collins is obviously a, a supremely talented guy, and he, you know, didn't have to, you know, learn all the stuff that everyone, that every drum teacher and professor says that you need to. Uh, he was already a legend by the time he decided to start learning how to read. It's the only time where I've not agreed 100% with South Park because they have a whole episode where they just bury Phil Collins. Uh, I think it's like the kids all take uh, ADHD medicine and it all like makes them really boring and then Phil Collins sounds great because they're really boring. It's not true, Trey. But yeah, uh, I'm not, I wasn't a gigantic fan of whatever was going on there. If I want to hear this kind of, you know, instrumental uh, far out prog, I'll listen to King Crimson. I really like what they became. I know I'm going to get killed in the comments because I like the pop Genesis and I love uh, Phil Collins' pop music. But this is a great example of, you know, what he was. He, he already had a gigantic career before he became a lead singer. He was the Dave Grohl of his time and i'm gonna get killed in the comments but there's that actually works for me because I've, I've said it before on videos phil collins made me want to play drums dave grohl made me want to be in a band and leave on hell made me want to be or try to be great i never got there but i, I try uh so yeah there you go deep benin i told you i was going to get this video in before the end of the year phil collins thank you for uh inspiring me uh at nine years old i knew that i was going to be a drummer for the rest of my life uh i got into teaching so i could have an income to finance my playing of my music career and phil collins is the reason so thank you very much sir and if you all enjoyed all that please feel free to like comment and share give me a double tap on the subscription and the notification bell remember my paypal link in the description all those donations go to the save the music foundation and again thank you phil collins and keep practicing until it's easy